again. So if you remember in my video from last week, I talked about some fabrics that I got from Joann's a few weeks ago that I was really excited about and I was planning what I was going to do with them. And one of the fabrics was this adorable fabric here. It's pandas and donuts. And I really didn't know quite what to do with this at the time. I wasn't exactly sure. I only had a yard and a half. And I thought maybe something with like maybe sleep shorts or a tote bag, but I decided on a tote bag because I needed to dust off my sewing skills and the sewing machine. It's been a hot minute since I did any sewing. So I thought I'd ease in with something super simple. And I thought, what better than a tote bag? So I spent yesterday creating this tote bag and following a tutorial that I found on Pinterest. I literally looked up like one yard or half yard tote bag, something along those lines. And it uses up the entirety of half of a yard of fabric. So if you have half a yard of fabric, you can make this tote bag. I will say I also did um, use a lining and an interlining. So I used kind of a stiff interfacing to interline all these pieces and a plain white cotton that I had as the lining. So I'm going to show you the process of how I made this bag and then we'll see it at the end. And then real quick, if you wanted to follow along with this tutorial or use this exact same pattern, I will post a link to what I followed in the description down below. So let's get right into the process. Okay, this is where I'm cutting out one half of a yard of this fabric. When I bought the fabric, I got a yard and a half, but since this tote bag pattern only needs one half yard, that's what I'm cutting out here. Thank you for appreciating the slow zoom. And here's just where I'm unfolding the half yard of fabric. Just kind of look at it, see where I need to iron it. And just, you know, looking at the creases, pressing out all the creases with my iron. I just had it on a cotton setting. This is a brushed cotton, but the iron didn't have any steam going. So it was just pressing out the wrinkles. Nothing too crazy there. And here I am slowly but surely marking out all my measurements. Now this pattern, I'm gonna pop a picture up on the screen here of this pattern. It's very basic, just a lot of rectangles that I'm just marking out right here and then I'll be cutting those out later. So along the bottom, I'm just cutting out the handle piece and then there's gonna be three squares that are 14 by 12 inches and then one at the very end that is six by 12 inches. So this pattern does use up every last inch of a half of a yard of fabric, which I think is pretty neat. So here I am just connecting all the lines that I drew. We're just gonna be marking all these out and then cutting them out later. So please enjoy footage of me marking out lines. And here is some more sped up footage of the exact same thing, just me marking out the rectangles this time. These rectangles, the 14 by 12 inch ones, are also going to be cut out with a lining fabric. For that, I used a plain white cotton that I had in my stash. I'm also going to be cutting out um, the big pieces, the big rectangles and the pocket pieces with a stiff interfacing that I had in my stash as well. All right, here's the cutting out process. Um, off screen, I also ironed out a half yard piece of white cotton and that's just underneath the brushed cotton here. So then when I cut out all the pieces, I'm cutting them all out at once. And here begins the sewing. For this first part, I am just sticking a piece of stiff interfacing between the big pocket piece that's just been folded in half. I'm just top stitching along the top of the pocket here just so it's a nice finish. Clipping off the thread. And then I folded it the opposite direction just to encase the interfacing between the two layers of cotton. So pretty much I'm making a tube. These pocket pieces are also quite stiff. If I made this tote bag in the future, I don't know if I would use this stiff of an interfacing for them. I might use a thinner interfacing, but keep the stiff interfacing for the main bag pieces. But for the pockets so far, it's okay. Here is the smaller pocket. This one's just a tiny little square that'll get stitched around the edges with that, you know, stiff interfacing sandwiched in between. 
can you also tell I learned how to do a pan and zoom in Adobe Elements recently? I've been having a lot of fun with that effect. Alright, here's me turning out that little pocket piece just so the brush cotton's on the outside and the interfacing is stuck in between and that just makes a perfect little square, a nice stiff little square. And I'm just using my marking pencil to kind of poke out the corners, make those a little bit sharper. And then that will get ironed flat and stitched to the lining pieces later on. Here is my beautiful cat. Here is Toast R. Strudel herself. Gazing out the window, taking a beautiful nap. Off camera, I made the handles for the bag. I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. And so here I am just basting those handles on. Those handles are just the fabric that was folded under a few times and stitched down with some top stitching. So now here I am assembling the big bag pieces. These are the 12 by 14 inch pieces. I have everything facing right sides in. I have the stiff interfacing on the outside and the actual brushed cotton on the inside. Earlier I attached the big pocket to one of the pieces and that's just also wedged in there. So along the sides here there are some very, very um, thick pieces of material that the sewing machine has to get through, but it actually did a great job. I'm very proud of my sewing machine. It stitched through some very thick things today. And here is the bag turned right side out actually. There's that pocket on the outside. This is me also just trying to flatten everything out, poke the corners out. And here is where I'm attaching that smaller pocket to one of the lining pieces. Just wherever I kind of wanted. I kind of centered it as much as I could. And then I'm stitching around three edges here just to get that little pocket attached. All right, here is the two lining pieces being attached together just like you would with any bag right sides facing each other, a lot of pins. The bottom section I'm supposed to leave open. The first time around, I accidentally sewed up all three sides, but then I later went in with a seam ripper just to pop that back open. But this was just a very thin, simple white cotton, very easy to sew through with that little hidden pocket tucked in the middle. And here is the interesting, fun, like 3D geometry bit. I am putting the lining and the bag itself together, right sides facing. So the little hidden pocket on the lining is tucked inside along with the entirety of the tote bag itself. You can kind of see it on the back there. And what I'm going to do after I have everything all aligned is I'm going to stitch around the upper bits of the bag around the opening, just attaching the lining to the bag itself. Now this was a little tricky just getting it to fit, but since my seam allowances were even all the way around, it did fit snugly, which is exactly what I needed. All right, here we go, stitching all the way around the top. This is me just stitching the lining to the bag itself. A lot of pins here. It was slow but steady. And because the um, interlining that I had was such a stiff interfacing, it was wanting to lay super flat when I needed it to curve. So I was kind of fighting it a little bit. But luckily all the seams lined up nicely and the bag got stitched together. And then here I am pulling the entire bag out through that small opening I left in the lining. This was a bit of a fight, but slowly but surely, <laughs> that was the theme of this project. Slowly but surely things came together. Just turning the bag inside out, getting the lining completely pulled through, and then ta-da, we'll have an entire bag set and ready. And then all that's left after this is to push the lining inside the bag after I stitch up that hole. So the hole that I left to turn the bag inside out, I'm just stitching that up here with some top stitching with black thread. I could have switched it over to white, but since the bag was just for me, I didn't mind too terribly much. Here is the adorable tote bag all finished and ready to go. I really, really like how it turned out. The handles feel like really sturdy. I have one row of top stitching on either side, if you can kind of see that. I didn't have to do that. I just thought it'd be really cute. 
And the interlining that I use, it's a very stiff interlining. It's the one I used for waistbands for the skirts for the shop. So it's made this tote bag very sturdy. Like, look at this. It's not flopping around at all. The front pocket is very secure. I, in the pattern, it said to put a line of stitching here to separate this pocket into two pieces. I didn't really want to do that. So I just have one big pocket. And on the inside, as you can see, I have the white cotton lining and then the little hidden secret pocket on the inside. I think this turned out so cute. It's the actual like, perfect size to carry things around in. So for instance, my um, iPad that I use for all my business stuff, it can slip right into this bag. It's the perfect fit. It feels very secure. It doesn't feel like it's gonna like tear the seams or anything. So I am so pleased with this bag. I think it's precious. And I mean, you can't beat this fabric, pandas and donuts. So. Thank you for watching me put together this bag. I hope you enjoyed watching the process. Now that I've dusted off my sewing skills, I'm feeling a little bit more confident that next week I can do something a little bit more intermediate. I don't quite know what it's going to be yet. We'll probably make be making either a skirt or a really simple dress. So if you want to stick around for that, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and I will see you next weekend. And remember, you're beautiful inside and out. Don't let anybody, especially yourself, you any different, okay? Bye-bye!